Welcome to Wiki Bearings, where we dive into the worlds of engineering excellence, from the automotive marvels to the industrial giants. Join us to explore the wonders that keeps the world in motion. My name is Hassanin Alwan, and I'm your host. Welcome to another episode of Wiki Bearing. Today we are going to talk about automotive belts. And for this topic, we have a, a very experienced guest with decades of experience in the automotive belt business and industry. Welcome Tan Attila from Daiko. You are the regional manager for Middle East, Africa, Greece, and Turkey. Thank you for coming to the show. Thank you, dear Hassani. It's great to be here. We, if we look at, at the belt business uh, or the belt, automotive belts, it's a very vast topic. And Daiko is a premium brand in this sector, well-known brand. Um, but just for our audience to know a little bit more about Daiko, uh, what does Daiko do? Daiko the brand, Daiko the company. I would uh, love to hear from you more. Thank you. Uh, Daiko was founded in uh, Dayton, Ohio in 1905 uh, as a Dayton rubber company. And then the name was transformed into Daiko in time. Yeah. So it's more uh, than 100 years? Yes, more than 100 years, almost 120 years. Yes, so yes. Daiko is uh, one of the first manufacturers of uh, belts. Hmm. And um, currently we are one of the few major uh, manufacturers, especially for the timing belt, which is, as you know, a very crucial component. Critical. For the, for the engine, yes, yes. exactly. Um, of course, there are many milestones in the history of the company, but... Uh, as, 100 years is a long time. Yes, it's quite a long time. Uh, there are a few, of course, milestones which are, let's say, very critical. Um, as the company was founded in 1905, mm. uh, Deco did not have direct presence in Europe until the beginning of 1990s. Okay. In uh, 1992, uh, Deco acquired uh, very famous Italian rubber and tire manufacturers, okay. industrial division. Uh, okay. along with its manufacturing facilities in the south of Italy. So uh, as of 1992, Deco became directly present in Europe. Okay. And uh, in, let's say, more or less three decades, now Deco creates almost half of its revenue from the region we call EMEA, Europe, Middle East, Africa, right. even though we were not present directly Yes. Uh, until 1990s in, in Europe. so Impressive growth. Yes, it's ex actually uh, quite now. The EMEA has been uh, maybe the most significant market for uh, for Deco. Okay. And, and uh, if we look at uh, the last uh, three decades, uh, Deco have uh, grown up to be a well-known um, and I think they are not only in the aftermarket, but also in OE, in European OE. Um, now, for, for our audience that doesn't know very well Daiko as a brand, what, what, the, what products do Daiko cover today, now after this? Uh, and, and how much of, it, of these products are present in the OE market? Mm -hmm. uh, Daiko is... Uh mainly the producer of uh, the timing belt and the polyvi belt. Uh, and of course, uh, the tensioners and the idlers that are used in the application together with the belts. Yeah, so the, so whole, the whole engine transmission. Part. Exactly, exactly. First of all, the timing drive we call uh, consists of the timing belt, uh, the, the timing tensioner yes. and the idler. Yes. Uh, and uh, also the, the poly-V belt and the poly-V tensioners yes. and idlers. These are the core businesses of uh, Deco. I mean, the poly-V, which we normally call the accessory belt. Or... Auxiliary belt, yeah. yes, also is a common usage as well. Uh, it transmits the, the power from the crankshaft to uh, the air, crump, uh, air conditioning compressor, mm. uh, the steering pump, yes. uh, the alternator as well. Mm. Uh, so Deco is a manufacturer and distributor of these uh, critical components for, for the engine. 
is 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 Daiko have any presentation or in the OE business as well? Of course, our um, our revenue is uh, more or less equally uh, diverted into OE and aftermarket. So almost half of our turnover comes from uh, OE, mm-hmm. and uh, half of our turnover comes from the aftermarket. So we are in uh, good position. Yes, we are. Let's balanced, say in balanced, balanced, balanced yes. uh, position. Yeah. Uh, we are um, focused on the OE, but we are also uh, quite strong in the aftermarket. And and, and how is your uh, uh, market in 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 the home of the original Daiko, like in US, in South America, and so on? Um, we have uh, four different geographical divisions in the aftermarket. Uh, mm-hmm. North America is one of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, LATAM, Latin America, is one of them. Mm-hmm. EMEA is one of them. And APAC, uh, Asia Pacific, Australia, China, is one okay. of them. Uh, so uh, EMEA is uh, a very important market for us, like mentioned before. And also our presence in the North American market is uh, extremely strong mm-hmm. as being a, a still. Yes, still uh, being an American company. Mm. Uh, so we are also working to increase uh, our share in the LATAM and uh, APAC regions as well. Now, um, if we generally look at uh, Daiko, it's very much uh, connected to European cars. Uh, um, I don't know how much of your uh, business is also going to the heavy duty, the truck business and so on. Do you have any idea? Um, well, if you consider the turnover, um, an important portion of our business is from passenger cars and light commercial vehicles. But um, we are also very strong, especially in OE, in heavy duty uh, applications. Uh, we are the OE uh, supplier uh, for uh, the poly V belt, mm-hmm. the auxiliary belt and the tensioner. So, our OE pedigree is extremely strong also in heavy duty. Okay. Uh, so uh, it's difficult to uh, make a comparison uh, from turnover point of view between no. passenger car yeah. and heavy duty, but uh, we could confidently say we are uh, equally strong both in OE and aftermarket in uh, both passenger car and heavy duty uh, applications. Mm-hmm. Now, if we if we look at your range, you, you're very strong in, in timing, and Uh, poly V and you have some other specialized product can you tell us a little bit because people read the numbers and they have no real uh, understanding of what does this number mean just I mean we will not I mean at the end it's a podcast we cannot do all the technicality of it but Mm -hmm. just some idea for people to identify maybe they're working with already some of the audience is is doing some Daiko but maybe they are also doing some other brands and maybe they want to understand how to identify the numbers and so on of course Uh, briefly I would like to uh, emphasize our timing belt range Mm -hmm. um, starts with uh, 9-4 and it's uh, either uh, consists of a uh, five digit number or six digit number starting with nine four okay and the the tensioners that are used with the timing belt mm. are uh, start with the atb atb yes and um, the um, also the idlers that mm. are used in the application are uh, the, the code the, the reference numbers start with atb for the poly V belt, it's actually... So, so the rigid components start with ATB for the timing... Timing belt, belt. yes. And the, the timing ATB belt... stands for timing. Uh, yeah. In the end of the ATB stands for the timing, timing belt. belt. Yes. And and when it comes to the timing belt, almost all of them are 9-4? Yes. They start with 9-4, yes. either yes. a five digits or a six digits. Yes. Okay, that's great. So uh, for the poly V belt, it's uh, also easy to identify because it goes like 6 PK... Mm. 1300 a popular a popular yes. way of uh, quite popular uh, yeah. to to un- it will be easy to, to understand, understand for the for the uh, consumer yeah. and also the tensioners that go with the poly v uh, start with apv apv yes okay so in addition to these of course we have uh, the water pumps mm-hmm. uh, that start with dp dp to give you an example dp 1000 mm is uh, it means a water pump mm. and uh, we have the thermostates also in our range which start with dt 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 1000 is a thermostate okay and uh, we have the wheel bearing mm. uh, which start with uh, kwd 
KWD. Yes, and mm-hmm. the steering and suspension uh, parts start with DSS, like Deco steering suspe- uh, okay. suspension. Okay, okay. Uh, now, of course, we, 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 I mean, people can refer to the catalog. You have a nice online application. Yes. Uh, people, if they, if they are using any of the Android or the iOS, they can search Daiko application for, for more information about that. Um, uh, but this is just to give the audience an idea of, to understand. So when they see a 9.4, they know it's a timing belt. They yes. see PK, this is a poly V and so on. Um, now, especially the timing belts are very popular. I mean, we are selling hundreds of thousands, probably you're selling millions of, of these uh, belts. Where does the success comes from? Why, why is it so popular to, for Daiko, the timing belt? Uh, the success, in my opinion, comes from our commitment to quality, uh, sustainability and our approach. Uh, to to our customers the level of service uh, that we give to our customers uh, is something very crucial for us so it's of course very important to have a high quality product but mm. it's also important to uh, to know how to approach to different markets it's mm. also important to understand the needs of uh, certain markets mm. so uh, we are of course committed to our uh, product's quality, but we are also focusing on the level of service we are giving to our uh, our customers. So, I mean, when it comes to, to quality, there is no compromise on the quality, but of do you course. think because maybe you are closer to the market, maybe you understand uh, and you are able to give a better service to the market? I mean, when 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 we started working with, with Daiko a few years ago, I mean, we are not very long, I think we, we started in maybe 2020 yes or something like this um uh, we we very soon understood the strength of of Daikon, the timing belt and this is why uh, it's, it's it's always an interesting question to ask and uh, definitely um let's continue on the timing belt if we look at there is a lot of misconcept about timing belt is it same as chain is it not different when do i need to change the timing belt mm-hmm. um some people say timing belt can uh, this is similar to the chain they can s- stay forever there is some misconcept about the timing mm-hmm. belt and since i have you here and especially because of our audience sometimes we see how things are and the, how how the garages or people change some day they change the bearing they don't change the belt sometimes they change the belt they mm-hmm. don't change the bearing and i would like to take the opportunity that you are here as a manufacturer as an expert in this to give us more insight onto this misconcept and how what is the right way to do of course uh, first of all the proper way to understand uh, when to change any parts including our parts is uh, to consult to the car manufacturer's uh, manual. Yes, for sure. Because uh, even though we speak about the timing belt or the timing chain, every timing belt can have a different frequency. Uh, every engines, every applications needs uh, might differ. Mm. So uh, some engines, timing belts could be uh, could be required to change at 60,000 kilometers. Yes. Another belt, uh, maybe could be changed at 120,000 kilometers. Sure. In general, uh, the chain is more durable, mm. uh, but it's uh, the most important thing to do is to check the car manufacturer's manual to understand when the belt or the chain must be changed. Yes. Uh, from our point of view, of course, um, when you replace the belt or any bearing in the power transmission or in the auxiliary drive, Mm. It is quite crucial to change all the components mm. uh, of the application. So if you change the timing belt, and but uh, do not replace the bearing, uh, it could have negative effects on the durability on the belt as well. So, and as then you later know, on the engine as well. Exactly, exactly. So um, once you are operating on the engine, once you pay for the labor, mm. uh, if you're changing any component, it's uh, safer to replace all the components to uh, to to have an ease of mind for the next 60 90 or 100,000 kilometers and i think it's also cost effective because of course when you look at the timing uh, belt or the timing uh, it is it is a very time consuming uh, process to to change 
it's a critical for the engine. Um, any damage to, 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 to that can damage the whole engine. So when, when we are opening then and we are changing that, we maybe should make sure that we change all the, the components. That would give us another, another maybe another 100,000 kilometers of, of uh, uh, mine. But if we don't do this, maybe after 20, 30 or 40, we have again to do something on that engine. Exactly. So it is also, I think, cost effective on, on, uh, on that side. Um, there is some misconcept saying that you, you just look at the belt if it's, there is no crack <laughs> or you don't see any signs uh, of wear on the belt, we, you don't need to change. Is this true? No, of course, it's um, it's not the proper way to analyze the belt just by observing with the eye because, mm -hmm. um, you know, the belt uh, is composed of rubber and cords inside. So uh, any damage might have occurred with time and with the usage. Uh, so the most proper uh, thing to do is either to follow the car manufacturer's manual or uh, when any uh, component needs to be re replaced in the power transmission. Mm. It's the safest way to change all the components at once. At least now we 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 have uh, we we have covered uh, th this this topic. There is a lots of even when we are selling the bearings, some sometimes uh, people does not buy the belt, and we say, okay, you are changing the bearing or the water pump. You have to do this, and and I think. Using this platform to educate is, is also an important part of, of what we do. Now, um, let's look at Daiko. We know Daiko is very strong on the European car park, um, at least for this, the past 20, 30 years, it's covering majority of, of the European car parks. But also from our experience and, and you developing and working to grow the Middle East and African market, we see there is a significant growth in the uh, in the in the emerging market. Let's call them Middle East, mm -hmm. Africa, mm -hmm. uh, yes. Turkey, and so on. What what makes where does this success comes from, and and how do you see uh, the growth in the past few years? Uh, our sales team consists of professionals who. Uh, work to understand the different needs of uh, different markets. So uh, OE, of course, is uh, a very crucial part of our business, but aftermarket requires uh, somehow a different approach. We are working with distributors like uh, Mineral Circles Bearings, uh, who have expertise on the markets that they are working with. We try to approach uh, different markets, different countries, uh, if necessary, with different sales uh, policy and different sales approach. We try to observe uh, the needs of the end user uh, in each country and we try to understand which is the best way to uh, connect them with our product. Mm. So this usually requires a different approach for different markets. This is what uh, we are mainly focusing on the areas that we are working. So country by country, we need to apply most of the time, a different strategy. I would say this is the root of uh, our success in the area. Now, if we look at the car park in, in this region, it's, it looks a little bit different than the, maybe the European car park or yes. the American car park. Yes. Does Taiko cover this this car park, which is in, in this region? I'm talking about Middle East and Africa. Of course. Um, our products uh, actually uh, cover more or less 95% of the car park in the in the region. Okay, so that's that's a big number. Yes, yes. Our OE presence also is uh, extremely strong with all the car makers and uh, truck makers, uh, especially in the in the area. So um, day by day, we are focusing on understanding the changing needs mm -hmm. uh, of the markets that we are working, and we are. Uh, trying to adapt our uh, product range in accordance with the needs of the market. Mm. So uh, I would be confident to say our coverage is extremely wide uh, mm. considering the competition. So so if we look at uh, Middle East and Africa, uh, of course there is European cars, but I think it's a predominant uh, with uh, 
Japanese and Korean cars application. So we can say confidently that you have the coverage for, for most of these applications. Exactly, exactly. Now, let's let's look at at the industry from from a different uh, from a different aspect now the market is is transportation and mobility is is we are in the era of the digital world and the era of uh, things are uh, are changing and i think there is a rise of what we call the micro mobility the e scooters the e skateboards the skate uh, boards and the mm, electrical bikes or bicycles and, and all of that. Um, the estimation of the market share uh, for for this micro mobility in 2023 was around 30 billion US dollars, and it's expected to reach 90 billion US dollar by 2030. That's huge. It's very big, and and it is something that um, I think we can start seeing this even both in Europe and in many cities that the, the transportation, especially smaller distances, the young generation are using these e-scooters, e-mobile uh, bicycles. Or, uh, so it becomes a, getting a more popular. And with these numbers, it is three times more it's from 30 to 90 in, in not so many years. So mm-hmm. do Daiko look at this as an opportunity market or a market to to look at? Uh, we are trying to uh, understand uh, how we can work on uh, on projects with uh, the manufacturers of uh, let's say different vehicles mm. in regards to micro mobility. Mm. Uh, in the recent years, we developed a project with the famous uh, German. Uh, car maker and motorcycle maker and the the power transmission belt of mm. the electrical motorcycle mm. uh, for OE was the Deco. Okay. So uh, we are uh, whenever there's power transmission we would like to be present there. So yeah. we are checking the opportunities different opportunities uh, about how to serve uh, the consumers. Mm. Uh, of course some applications um require different uh, specifications so we are trying to uh, work uh, to understand uh, what type of applications uh, we can work and we are uh, keen on developing different products mm. uh, to 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 satisfy the needs of the manufacturers you know what what makes this um, also interesting because it's a lot of uh, what we call them the shared mobility because nowadays you can uh, with your mobile app take uh, a scooter for 20 minutes 30 minutes or 40 minutes and you know and it becomes so the mileage or the number of kilometers they run is way different than if you are there is a one owner and this mm-hmm. is i think mm-hmm. the shared mobility is not only on this uh, micro mobility but i think it's a concept that is becoming more popular, Very in, popular. Uh, yes. in, in different markets where you share the car or share. and I think if we look at these cars the normally the mileage per year is is way higher than a, a single user of this application and this is I think it's gonna change maybe the how rapid we have to change these uh, spare parts if exactly. it's a belt or exactly. if it's a chain or and and I think things are uh, like the the transformation of 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 mobility and transformation it's it's on its way we are not yet there but i think there is a lot we are maybe uh lucky to to be part of this transformation that we are observing and i think we still still we have a long way to go until maybe we reach autonomous cars and all but with with that all of these the number of services you have to do on a car per year is changing and rapidly demand, changing yes. and it's have a demand on these products young people uh, in some countries especially tend to have uh, less interest on owning a car so car ownership uh, is uh, in some countries is less popular i was really surprised to understand my, that uh, understand my i was really surprised to understand my 18 year old nephew was not interested in owning a car and no, had no interest in cars in general. So um, 
young people usually have a more pragmatic approach to cars rather than owning. It could be uh, sharing or it could be uh, micro mobility mm -hmm. solutions. So it's really surprising to see, uh, to, to witness how the industry is uh, changing in that respect. You, you know, like, um, Maybe we are old enough, uh, like it have always been a dream to to own a car. Exactly. I mean, when we are young, uh, at 18, we, the first thing we want to do is have a driving license. Exactly. And, exactly. And the first then, thing I did when I turned up 18 was to apply for a driving license. <laughs> exactly. And I think it was very popular at at, uh, uh, at our time is that we, this is, was a milestone. A driving license was an important milestone. And then owning a car was like the next important uh, and what kind of a car and and we would we would dream of a car for for years before we we buy and exactly. I think this is also changing uh, very with the younger generation looking at this it's a bit yeah maybe looking at it it's transportation from A to B um, not anymore a luxury or or a, a prestige to own a car or not. I think. And it is interesting how 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 this this uh, generation looks at cars. Now, if we look at from the the power transmission business, or from uh, this is actually a good because um, these these cars will have more mileage, and we, we will have more business to do. So this is a, a, a it's 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 a good sign for the business. Uh, but this is also shows that. Um, the, the mindset is, is, is shifting from owning a car to maybe sharing a car or using this e-mobility. Exactly. Recently, I think I read that um, Daiko have opened a full-scale belt manufacturing in Mexico. Yes. And uh, while I was reading the news and I was like, what came to my mind, like, why Mexico? And, and like, what does it mean for me? as a distributor that you, you you are now producing in Mexico. Give us some insight about what's going on on the other side of the world. Um, of course, as you know, in the last decade, uh, Daiko uh, grew very aggressively, especially in the aftermarket. So uh, we have manufacturing facilities uh, in different locations all over the globe. Uh, we believe that Mexico is uh, the proper location to first of all enhance uh, our presence in uh, North America and LATAM and then of course to support some part of the EMEA business. Mm. Uh, I think DECO will continue investing in uh, new manufacturing facilities in the uh, following years uh, to mm. come. We are trying to optimize uh, our manufacturing, uh, our uh, strength in uh, logistics and stock optimization. So. I think uh, our manufacturing facility in Mexico will help us improve the level of service uh, we are giving in, in specifically the timing belt. Mm. You know, you know why, why it was surprising <clears throat> for me? Uh, because recently uh, I heard that one of the big manufacturer or premium manufacturer of a belt is closing some of their manufacturing facilities, for example, in some other parts of the world. Yes. And uh, or then Daiko is opening a new facility. So uh, this is why it's a bit you know, surprising. This means um, you would be able to maybe better delivery time, maybe more range of products. Exactly. Uh, will it only uh, service the North America market or we will see some products coming to the region? No, of course, not necessarily only to uh, only to serve the North American or uh, the Latin American markets, but uh, we believe it will be also uh, helpful for us to improve the level of availability that we grant to the, our uh, distributors in EMEA region. Mm -hmm. um, we also have uh, different uh, manufacturing facilities in uh, different countries. Mm. From logistics point of view, uh, we believe that it's important to have, um, let's say, regional uh, manufacturing facility to uh, sure. to optimize the service that we uh, provide to our uh, mm. distributors all around the globe. Mm. I know that we get already now some products from Argentina. So you yes. already have, uh, and we got products from different parts of the yes. world. So, yes. so maybe in the future we see some made in Mexico uh, Daiko belts. Likely. Likely. Why not? Um, 
another another topic um, is what I call the the motorsport or the hobby sport. Uh, now this is a growing market as well. The general motorsport is today 140 billion dollar market. Um, it's estimated to grow up to 200 billion in, in 2030. But I know as well, Daiko have some niche in that hobby sport market. And, and I want you to, to tell us more about this. Of course, uh, Daiko loves competition, mm. Yes, It's, uh, it's uh, in our, uh, in our uh, DNA. DNA, exactly, exactly. So we also have uh, sponsorships all around the world in different uh, categories. Mm. Uh, it would be uh, important to emphasize our presence in uh, uh, snowmobiles, yeah. uh, all-terrain vehicles, mm. uh, electrical motorcycles, mm. like we mentioned before. Yeah. So, as I mentioned, wherever there's a power transmission, uh, we, we are want there. to be there. We, we would like to be there, so we are there. Um, as it is in our DNA, uh, we try to uh, support. Uh, 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 Different, uh, different types of, um, let's say, a competition uh, mm. all around the world. So uh, we are present uh, as Deco in, uh, in different organizations, mm. both with our products and as a, as a sponsor. You know, you know like, uh, why, why I think this is interesting, and I want you to give us a bit more on, on, on this. Now, in this, I know like Snowmobile is maybe famous in, in some part of the, maybe in Canada, north of Europe. Uh, mm. But uh, we don't have a lot of snow in, in Middle East. <laughs> in yes, Middle East. I know. <laughs> but but on the other side, we have a lot of sun, and 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 we we see a lot of Daiko's product in the four by four, the, yes. these buggies, uh, yes. and I think a lot of our audience from the region, uh, it's as part of, of what we do in this part of the world. We we like this what you call it. Uh, uh, all-terrain uh, vehicles, right? You, yes, something? all-terrain vehicles, yeah. yes, ATVs. So we like to take <clears throat> these buggies, 4 by 4s in the desert. And and I know you have a special range dedicated for this. And some of our audience maybe recognize that, but the, for the others that does not recognize, I, I want to know more. Uh, of course, um, our... Um, you mentioned that we have uh, niche uh, mm. products in mm. that in that segment. Uh, we are covering a wide range of uh, all-terrain vehicle uh, belts uh, for 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 power transmission. Uh, we are offering uh, more than 500 items, uh, wow. so it it That's... covers uh, the majority of the ATVs, the popular ATVs that are used uh, in the in the Middle East. So uh, when the when the end user uh, needs to replace the belt. Uh, I'm sure he will know Deco immediately. So mm -hmm. he will have the uh, he will have the product. He will have the availability with the uh, with the let's say acceptable uh, acceptable price. Mm -hmm. So uh, we are quite content with the growing business also in that in that segment. Mm -hmm. I, I know that uh, some of the popular part they start with XTX and yes. uh, HPX and and. Uh, HP and CVT and, and I think uh, uh, th these are interesting interesting product for that niche all-terrain uh, vehicles um, yes I mean uh, I was for us it's an interesting because in this part of the world is, is the going to the desert is part of of the uh, let's go the, the the region speciality we we now we take our time in the weekends, maybe we drive in the desert and we have uh, uh, maybe a coffee or tea somewhere there. And it, it's, it's, it's a hobby um, that is, is by most of, of, of the area, if it's UAE, Saudi or Oman, uh, and it, it, is, it is a common and, and uh, your brand is presented in a lot of these, these products. Um, let's look at a question that a lot of uh, our audience is, is always wondering when, whenever we, we interview, we have a guest from the engine side of the business. Mm -hmm. Um, we cannot deny the growth of hybrid cars, electrical cars in the, in the market. Um, and where is Daiko in, in this segment? 
um, how how is is uh, Daiko taking this challenge? Um, of course, our uh, product range, um, some part of our product range uh, is only present in the in the internal combustion engine. Mm. Uh, what we believe as a company is that we are quite successful in observing and understanding and developing. Uh, the needs of the changing uh, market conditions. Uh, an important part of our product range uh, is also present in the electrical vehicles. And of course, uh, in the future, uh, how the aftermarket of these electrical vehicles will evolve is still uh, yet to be answered. But we believe we are confident uh, with uh, adapting to to uh, the, the changing needs of the market. So uh, we will always be uh, an important supplier uh, for the aftermarket, also for the hybrid cars, especially and electrical vehicles. Mm -hmm. So we are uh, we are not afraid of the of the changes of the aftermarket. We are uh, confidently uh, trying to observe and react accordingly. You know, um, it is when it comes to aftermarket still. Even the growth of the sales of electrical vehicle, but the car park is still 99% globally dominated by the ICE engine. So exactly. in aftermarket, well, as a distributor like me, I think that we we still have 10, 20 years to to look at this. It's it's of course it's a a market that is significantly uh, it's growing, hmm. but on the other hand. Um, we have observed uh, something that is happening uh, in this region um, where the growth of hybrid uh, vehicles and these hybrid vehicles for us we we love that because it's it's it gives you so you, you will still supply all the ice engine components plus the other components yes. so so it's actually not um, it's an opportunity i look at it from from me as a distributor uh, working with you and with some famous manufacturer i think hybrid is is a big opportunity a lot of uh, the change of in this region is happening through uh, hybrid people are moving from ice to hybrid which gives the advantage of maybe cost cutting uh, efficiency but also does not require the the infrastructure of electricity and so on. And we, we are seeing that growing not only in the Middle East, but also in Africa, because the infrastructure, the electricity infrastructure is not so strong. And we see this habit. And for the hybrid business, I think we are we are well covered there. Uh, Hassanin, I think the key to success, both for the supplier, the manufacturer, and for the distributor is to, uh, to observe and react accordingly. Uh, to the changes in the aftermarket. Mm. Uh, so even if the market is to uh, convert from uh, ICE engine to hybrid engine or to electrical engine, uh, any company, manufacturer, supplier or distributor that is able to react uh, to the changing needs of the market, I think they will be successful. True. There's true. still lots of parts to produce and sell, sure, in my sure. opinion. So... Let's. I know that that always uh, Daiko is working on on new project. And what are the latest product? Is there any new product in the pipeline? You mentioned a little bit about uh, the wheel bearing kit. Mm -hmm. I think it's quite a fairly new product in the. Mm -hmm. So tell us if there is anything uh, that we should expect uh, or anything in the pipeline. Of course, um, Hassanin. In my eleven years uh, with the company, I have seen. Uh, first, the change uh, in the markets uh, we are working, especially in Turkey and Middle East, from the sales of the single belt to uh, the timing belt kit, mm. and then the timing belt kit with water pump. Mm. And now the market is slowly changing to timing belt kit with water pump and the thermostate. Yeah. So um, recently we have increased uh, thermostates, mm. uh, wheel bearings, Mm. and uh, steering and suspension parts to to have a more complete range. Uh, this all happened in the last five years, more or less. Mm. Uh, the next five years, 10 years, we are trying to understand uh, how we can serve our customers better and to, to choose the product lines to, to start will be key 
uh, to enhance our growth. Mm. Um, for the moment, the majority of our sales is um, from the, the timing belt kits uh, with water pumps and uh, the thermostates and the wheel bearings and the steering and suspension is uh, for the moment completing our range. So uh, in the near future, we will see how uh, we will we will increase mm -hmm. and which product lines we will use to serve our customers better. Sure. Tan, it was really lovely to have you on, on our show. I mean, we, we enjoyed your present. Uh, we had uh, the time to look at some Daiko products and, and the timing belts and auxiliary belts. Any last words? Uh, Hassanin, it was a blast since day one to work with you and your company. Thank you, thank always you. enjoy your presence and always happy to exchange uh, ideas. And uh, your vision is also very valuable for us. So I thank you very much for this kind invitation and uh, hope to work with you in uh, many more years to come together. Will do, will do. For our audience, thank you very much for this episode. It was uh, lovely to have you, Tan, uh, on this show. Until next time, keep spinning towards success. And that wraps another episode of Wiki Bearings. Don't forget to subscribe for more insight into the fascinating realm of the engineering innovation. Until next time, keep spinning towards greatness.